This video is partnered with NVIDIA Studio. This effect has haunted me. This is an effect I developed months ago. And while I will show you how to recreate this effect for yourself in DaVinci Resolve, I also want to tell you the story of why this effect hasn't seen the light of day and how, um, because this is happening now, some exciting things are in the future. Now, a long time ago in this apartment, I started working on a passion project. Uh, long story short, it's the closest thing I've done to a standard video essay and things were going pretty well. I got the script down, I recorded the VO, and then I started working through all of the custom effects and motion graphics I wanted to pour into this one piece. One of those custom effects was this one. I had a piece of footage I wanted to use and I wanted it stylized in a really interesting way. So I got started. Enter issue the first. Almost everything I've done on this channel up to this point has been done on a computer that at this point is coming up on right about uh, six years old. It's got an i7 7700K CPU, a 1070 GPU, and 16 gigabytes of RAM. You wanna know something pretty wild? The recommended uh, minimum specs directly from Blackmagic Design for doing anything in the Fusion page is 32 gigabytes of RAM. I think I've done some cool and legitimately impressive stuff in Fusion and none of that was made on a computer um, that Blackmagic says should have that good a time in Fusion. And I managed, but that did, you know, really become an issue when I tried doing intensive effects or especially some of the uh, effects using the Neural Engine and Resolve uh, like Magic Mask. And that brings us to uh, issue the second. This effect is almost entirely built around the Magic Mask tool in Resolve, which yes, um, is limited to the paid studio version of Resolve. But I had a studio license, that wasn't the issue I was running into. Before DaVinci Resolve 18.1, Magic Mask was limited to the color page. And to get a clip, you know, into the color page to do Magic Mask and then get that back into the Fusion page was a hassle to say the least. There were workarounds, it wasn't fun. Put them together and what have you got? A pretty bad time. <laughs> I was building a scene with over uh, 10 instances of magic mask. I had added texture on top of that. I had assets spread across, uh, you know, the edit page with multiple clips and then going back to the fusion page. It, it was a lot. So I sort of gave up and you know, I had other videos to work on and other projects and that just sort of led to the entire project stalling out. Enter NVIDIA Studio. NVIDIA Studio sent me an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4080 to power up my creativity in DaVinci Resolve and to spread that creativity to all of you. DaVinci Resolve and the RTX 4080 feel like a perfect fit. We've got a AV1 encoding, which I am very excited to dive into further, dual eighth gen NVIDIA encoders for other popular codecs that can up to two times video export speed, and the power that the Resolve Neural Engine needs for some of these really cool effects like Magic Mask. GeForce RTX 40 series GPUs also unlock access to the NVIDIA Studio platform, delivering RTX and AI acceleration in top creative apps like Resolve, NVIDIA Studio drivers, and a suite of exclusive AI-powered tools like NVIDIA Omniverse, Broadcast, and Canvas. So I ended up building my first PC using this 4080, and when it came time uh, to put the system to the test, I knew exactly what effect I wanted to tackle first. And let me just say here, I was completely blown away. I was able to find and maintain a creative flow so much easier when I didn't feel like I was constantly running into a wall and waiting for my system to catch up. Let me show you exactly how I made this effect. And here we are in DaVinci Resolve on the edit page. We've got an open timeline and just, hey, one little clip. Now you saw in the intro, I have worked up this effect on a few different clips. We're gonna look at this one cause it will just straight up be the easiest. There is only subtle movement. There is really good separation between the different areas I want to track. I will talk a little bit about how to deal with issues you might run into in Magic Mask, but for going through this effect quickly, this will serve us just great. And all I'm gonna do is with my playhead over that clip, I'm gonna click this button to open the Fusion page. And here we are in Fusion. You might have some of these windows opened or closed. You can sort of close them as needed. But here we have the nodes area of the Fusion page where all the magic happens. And you can see we have a media in and a media out. This media in is bringing in that clip and the media out is sending uh, that back to the edit page. And whatever we do in the Fusion page, we'll have to get plugged back into that media out so that we can see it on the edit page. There is a lot going on in the Fusion page. And uh, outside of some basic things like, hey, open the inspector to you know, have access to all your controls for your nodes and other things, this effect will be pretty straightforward. The only thing I want to mention for especially new users is the viewers. Um, you might have two viewers by default, but you can click this button above either viewer um, you know, to make that single viewer uh, the only one available. And when you click on any node, you can click 
one or two uh, to pull that up in each viewer. So for instance, if I add something like a color corrector node, connect that media in two. So I am previewing the media in on viewer one, the color corrector on video two. And if I open my inspector in that color corrector and just you know pull down the saturation, that's completely black and white. But that only shows up on viewer two because uh, I am only previewing that node on viewer two and I am previewing a node before the color corrector on viewer one. Very important. And one of the big strengths of working with notes. I'll get rid of that for now. Uh, we will just be working in one viewer, I believe, for the time being. I'm gonna click off that media in node, then press shift space to pull up this select tool search bar. And I can start typing in magic. And hey, magic mask. Very cool. This is getting exciting. I can connect the media into that, then I can preview the magic mask and we can start to talk about what we want in this scene. I'm gonna have a few different copies of a magic mask node and they're going to be tracking different objects in our scene. We're gonna track his jacket, his shirt, uh, his hands, his face, which maybe we could track all in one scene. They'll probably be, you know, the same color that will texture later, but I think they're far enough apart. I don't want any, you know, tracking confusion. I'll track his hands, I'll track his face separately. And then I'm also gonna track his hair and his beard, and that'll get a little interesting. You'll see what we do then. Okay, so hey, our first magic mask, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and track his shirt. So all I have to do is just click and hold in my viewer and draw a line. I did draw that line a, a little long because I wanted to make sure I got a little bit of this dark area as well. It'll think for a second and then uh, that should be the only thing you see. But you'll notice um, we are missing a bit of the shirt and here's the little pro tip. Uncheck this post multiply image checkbox and that will sort of superimpose um, your selection back over the whole image and you can see, oh, it missed this area of the shirt. So if I draw another line, it gets that color and make sure I get this color as well and we're already doing a great job. Um, so then I am at the beginning of my clip. Oh no, I'm not, I'm here in the middle. So I can just click this button now to track forward and backwards. And you can see, hey, it starts moving. Uh, it is a good idea to watch long as it runs this track, especially in more complicated scenes or when uh, the objects you are tracking become you know, covered up by something else in scene. Uh, the track might pick up something you don't want to include, so you can just stop this track and uh, deal with that. Um, I don't need to do it here, but I will show you how. I'm gonna check that post multiply back. And hey, we have just that shirt. Now, I was able to do this track uh, by just sort of painting these lines on one frame. If your track starts to slip a little bit, you can paint more lines on any frame and then recompute that track. And importantly, you can also uh, click and hold Alt. And when you drag there, you will make a red line and that will tell the computer, hey, I don't want whatever I've selected here. Um, I'm gonna undo that. And okay, <laughs> while I did that, uh, it, it, it sort of erased that cache data. Magic Mask in the Fusion page is doing some interesting stuff with caching. I don't entirely have my mind wrapped around. Um, sometimes, you know, if there are instances where you lose your Magic Mask track, uh, you can try this regenerate all button and see if that, you know, gets you where you wanna go. So what am I gonna do? I'm just gonna reset this node <laughs> and uh, run the track again. I'm sure we'll have a good little time now. Uh, hey, if you've got a track, don't mess with it. <laughs> but uh, once that track is done, you'll see I can skim through and we just have, you know, his shirt isolated. Here's one other really important information. Uh, I want this effect just a little bit janky. I want these nice sharp edges. Most of the time you probably don't if you're cutting something out. Uh, you might want to keep some of like the natural blur towards the edge of that shape or you might just want a slightly better track in general, but we'll get, you know, that sort of uh, uh, blurred edges. Uh, in this mode option, we have faster, which we are using, which will give us nice sharp edges or better. Uh, for this effect, I'm going faster, which is great because it's also, it's also faster. But now coming out of this magic mask, I am going to click off and click this button up here to create a background node. By default, this will, I believe, just be a black background. I'm gonna pull up these faders. So we have a white background, actually, what I'm gonna do is click and hold this eyedropper and select a color from this shirt. I'm gonna choose this one. It's still bright, but it's not solid white. And if I connect the output, which is this little gray square of the magic mask to this blue masking input of the background node, when I preview that, we will have just a white solid. And if I were to add a merge node after this main media in, and connect the background node to the green foreground element, if I previewed that, 
you would have our original footage, except his shirt is now just this solid white texture. And this is, this is the effect. <laughs> so now I need to repeat that process for each uh, individual area we want as a separate color. I'm making a magic mask. This one now will be this jacket. I'm doing some quick lines to make sure we get what we want. I will let that think for a second. Hey, that looks like a great old track. I will run it. Looks like we are getting a little bit of the shadow maybe of this hand. That's gonna be fine for now, um, but we will keep running through this. I'm gonna create another uh, background node, a eyedropper, a nice dark blue area of this suit. Cool, connect that, and if I preview that, cool. Ah, it's a little dark. Maybe if I just pull up the blue a little bit. Sure, run it again. Uh, next, we're gonna go grab these hands. Magic mask, I'll draw a line. Uncheck that to preview. Um, especially significantly lighter and darker areas might give you a little bit of an issue. We want it rough. It's definitely rough, but it's pretty cool too. And that'll go pretty good. Oh, nice. It is even, you know, pulling back off the cuff a little bit. As these blur together, you know, you will absolutely lose the definition of individual fingers. But, you know, that's, that's the fun, almost like paper, like cutout effect we are going for. As that is complete, if I uh, check that back, we will have, you know, just floating hands. <laughs> Also kind of spooky. Uh, I will create a uh, background node, pick a decent, you know, skin colored texture, connect that up, magic mask again. I'm also going to go ahead and delete this merge because um, we will be combining these in a very specific order later. And now we are looking at his face. And this one, um, we will do quite a bit of that like negative selection. Uh, magic mask, it knows, it knows what a head is. So if I just draw a line, hey, it will give us his entire head. That's great. I don't want his entire head. I want, you know, pretty much just his skin or not just his skin. That sounds weird. I want his head minus his hair. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna undo this initial line because I drew a line through his beard and I don't want his beard. I want his face, his ear, his neck. And hey, when I, I need to, his neck, when I only selected his neck, it knew a little bit not to include his beard. That's great. I'm gonna draw a line for his hair. And just so it knows, I'm gonna draw a red line through his beard too. Ooh, how precise do I wanna get? Now, nah, we'll do red line all the way through mustache as well. This looks wild, but I think it'll do a pretty good job of tracking what we want. And hey, yeah, it is doing a pretty good job. So this will run. And then we can make another magic mask. Uh, oh, connect it up here instead. All back to that media in. And pretty much just do the opposite. Only select his hair and his beard through down there. Uh, yeah, we're not getting too much of that shirt or anything else. And we can track that instead. Now I did skip the step of a background node for his you know, face skin, that feels weird to say. So I'm just gonna copy this background node that had this hand color we liked, connect that back up and then make a new background node for his hair. I'll go back to previewing the media in, um, pick a, a color. I don't straight want all the way black, but just like a darker area will probably come through fine. And now, we have all of these individual elements and we just need to put them back together. But this gets to the other uh, big element in the scene and that is the texture. But first we do need to get these elements all together and I'm gonna do that by connecting these outputs and then connecting those you know, back to the merge of that, uh, what those connections make. And then when we preview that last merge, hey, we have a little cutout man. Uh, I am gonna stack these back up to keep things uh, a little clean. Node organization can be very, very helpful. But we end with this one merge node with all of those layers stacked together. And if we were to go back and add that merge node like we did before over our main scene, we would have a very basic version of this effect. Hey, you've got the real image, you got the cutout man, but we can do more. I'm gonna delete that and I'm going to jump ahead and click this uh, image right next to the background node, which is the fast noise node. If you preview this, you'll get this sort of cloudy shape. And especially if you pull up the detail and pull up the scale, you can start to see you've got uh, this main, it's a, it's a fractal noise texture. If you've done much in After Effects, there are tools very much like this. And all I really want to do is to stack two copies of this fast noise with different texture levels. So this one, I'll pull down the scale. It'll be a little more general. 
I will pull up the detail, the contrast a little bit. I'm gonna pull up brightness. So it's it's subtle, but you know, some areas you've got more of that texture, some areas you've got less. Yeah, this one we're keeping nice and subtle. Less contrast is what I really want, yeah. But after that, I am creating another fast noise, and this one we're gonna go in the opposite direction. I'm pulling the scale way, way up. The slider stops at 20, but if you just click in this box, you can enter whatever number you want. I can enter 100, it really scales down. I'm gonna go up even more, let's say what, like 300, where it's almost this like noise grain feature. These controls still do a lot. I'm gonna pull up this contrast brightness a bit. Uh, at this scale, the detail does very, very little. But now, if I take that first fast noise, connect the output to the mask input of that second fast noise, uh, it, it connects them. Uh, this smaller fast noise, because it is being masked by the first fast noise, uh, in their darker areas, it will actually uh, be you know less transparent because of how it you know is connecting these. But that's what we want. Okay, here's what we're doing, right? Okay, I'm gonna connect the output of this fast noise texture to the output of our cutout scene. That will create a merge, and when I preview that, uh, some interesting stuff is starting to happen. You can see it is adding texture over these cutout, but uh, there are a few things we don't want. Number one, uh, this texture is over the entire scene, which we don't want. We only want it over the cutout. This is, is pretty easy to solve. I can take that same output and connect it to the blue mask input of this merge node. This merge node is uh, taking these fast noise textures, putting them on top of this cutout texture. And if I mask this by the same texture I'm plugging into the background, boom. It only shows that texture uh, where uh, this cutout texture has something solid, which is where, where we want it. Now you might notice uh, this is very, very strong and we don't, one, want our colors this bright and two, this is just a really strong effect. Luckily in this merge node, we have these apply modes. These are your main composite modes. You can mess around with these, get tons of different looks. Uh, but I know for this, if I scroll down and get to overlay, then yeah, that's pretty good. It just adds a little bit of texture in there. And you know what? I might actually go back into that second fast noise and pull up the scale even more yeah, just so it's like a bit finer, and we have this like pretty cool texture. Now, if you start playing, you will notice this texture does stay in place. If you wanted any movement, uh, you could pull up this seethe rate just a little bit, maybe just a good bit, and that texture would you know move around maybe a whole lot. That texture, yeah, would have some movement in there. That's purely a stylistic decision. Uh, but now we just need to comp this back over our main scene. I will create that merge node. Uh, if you click and hold uh, shift, then if you uh, move a node over any other connection of nodes, you'll see it will uh, sort of highlight that and ask if you want to drop that in there, and then it'll be connected. So I connect that back over, and now that cutout with texture is back in its real world scene. Uh, we've got some interesting stuff with this watch, areas I could clean up. Uh, you might've noticed at the beginning, his beard you know, juts out <laughs> a little bit. Now, the only other thing I did was actually add a uh, color corrector node before that merge and you know, pull down saturation just a little bit, um, sort of just to really help the colors that we choose pop an extra bit. And you could either preview this uh, here in the Fusion page, but if you do go back to the edit page, make sure your playback render cache is set to smart, then this effect uh, will cache. Uh, another tip with these three dots in the viewer, if you uh, select show all video frames, then as you plays this through, um, it will sort of force that cache, which I will do now. It'll go through. But once that is done, you should have perfectly smooth playback and you've got this really cool cutout effect with added texture over your live footage. I think this is very cool. I hope you do too. This was so much fun to put together and I can't thank NVIDIA Studio enough for helping to make it all possible. Whether you're a digital designer, editor, broadcaster, NVIDIA Studio gives you the tools you need to supercharge your creative process. And for the latest info on how NVIDIA Studio is helping creators create, check out their weekly in the NVIDIA Studio blog. Absolutely check them out following the link in the description. Depending on when you click that link, you might see someone familiar. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.